Before ES6, we had to find ways to modularize applications in JavaScript. We could do it through the use of patterns and are using different libraries. Now, modules are part of the language. Hello, my name is Thiago Tempo and this is Tempo Coding. When you talk about modules in JavaScript, there are two things we have to talk about. The first is the syntax for creating, exporting and importing modules. The second is how we can load those modules. The syntax for creating and using modules is part of the specification of ES6 or ES2015 as it's officially called. So it is a standard and it should be implemented by browsers in the near future and, is, and it is implemented by compilers such as Babel, Tracer and TypeScript. The second part is how those modules are loaded. There is an ongoing specification which is not part of ES6 and is not yet a standard. That specification is about how JavaScript modules should be loaded. So you may think, can I use JavaScript modules in my application today? Well, there is a project on GitHub called ES6 Module Loader that does exactly that, load modules. This project tries to stay up to date with this spec, so the code we write today might be the closest to the what this spec will be. There is another project called System.js that is built on top of the ES6 module loader, so it uses the same syntax but it also works with other patterns such as AMD and CommonJS. One other approach would be to use module bundlers such as Webpack and Browserify. When using such tools, we can use the ES6 module syntax for importing and exporting modules and they will keep the expected behavior of those modules, but they will bundle your JavaScript files together. System.js can also bundle the application files, but you don't need to do that if you just want to use it to load modules. In this video, I'll be using System.js and the main reason why is because System.js tries to follow the ES6 module loader specification. So there's a great chance that the code we're writing today will become a standard. Keep in mind though that this video is not about System.js, it's about how to export and import modules. I'm just touching the surface of System.js and using it to load the modules. To use System.js we have to first install it, and I'm going to do it using npm. Once installed, all we have to do is add a reference to it in the HTML page. I'll just add a reference to the system.js file that is inside the node modules slash systemjs slash this folder. System.js can also transpile ES6 code on the fly with the help of some transpilers such as Babel, Tracer or TypeScript. Tracer is its default transpiler, so to keep this video simple, I'll be using it. I just have to install it using npm and add a reference to the page. Also, in the HTML file, there is a reference to a JavaScript file called app.js. Looking at the app.js file, we can see that it is a very simple script that adds a div element with some message to the body of the page. The important thing here is that this script is surrounded by an immediate invoked function expression, also known as if. This is a very common technique used to isolate variables and functions so they won't pollute the global scope. As we can see, if we look for the message variable in the global scope, we won't find it. Now, if I remove the script from the function, we'll see that the window object now has a message property meaning that the script is running on the global scope. Why is this important? Well, when using modules, every file is its own scope. No variables nor functions declared inside a module will be in the, in the global scope. So, because every file is a module and it's, it has its own scope, we can remove the immediate function. There is no need for it. Now, in the HTML page, we have to load this file as a module. To do that, we have to add a script tag to the page and call system.import, then pass the path to the file we want to import, which is the module. One last thing when using system.js to load a module. If the module does not export nor import any other one, system.js considers this as a global module because of backwards compatibility. 
which means that our function and variable will still be added to the global object. To change that, we have to configure System.js and tell it that our modules will be always of the type ESM, that stands for ECMAScript module. To configure System.js, we have to call the config function and pass an object with the key meta. We are also saying that all scripts inside the JS folder will have the module format ESM. Now, if you refresh the page and try to access the variable message, it will not be accessible. But we can see that the message indicating that the app was loaded was logged to the console. That's great! It means that the module was really loaded and executed and it didn't leak any functionality to the global scope. Now what will happen if I load this module a second time? I'm going to duplicate the line loading the module and we'll see the results in the browser. See that the message was logged only one time? That's because every module is loaded and executed only once. They're like singletons. It doesn't matter how many times a module is loaded, we'll only have one instance of that module. Now, with just one file, we cannot demonstrate how to use modules. So let's add a new file and let's call it movies.js. In this file, we have a list of movies. And what I want to do is to print those on the page. So I'm going to export this list. To export the list, we have to add the keyword export before declaring the constant. Now, back to the app.js file, I'm going to paste some code that will present the movies on the page. There's nothing new in this code. I'm finding an element called content, iterating over a movies array and adding paragraphs to the content element with each movie. Now all I have to do is to load the movies array and I'll be doing that by importing the array from the movies.js file. I have to use the import keyword and between braces the name of the object that was exported, so in this case movies, and then I have to say that I'm importing it from the movies.js file. If we check the page, we'll see that the movies were listed. It is important to notice that I used movies between the braces because the variable exported has the name of movies. Let's try another example. In the movies module, I'll be exporting another variable called favorite movie. And back in the app, I'll print the favorite movie in red. To do this, I have to import the favorite movie variable from the movies module. One more time, I have to use the same name as was declared in the original module. Because if we change it, there will be an error. But we can import the favorite movie from the movies object and rename it to something that one would find more appropriate. We do that by using the keyword S and the name we want to use. Of course, it's not just variables we can export, we can also export functions. We can also export classes. Now, you can see that if we import different objects and functions from a module, the import statement could become very large. We can shorten it by using an asterisk and giving it a name after keyword S. This way, we'll be importing everything that was exported from the movies module into an object called MovieMod. One other thing, let's say that in a module we'll be exporting different things but there's one that we consider more important, and we want to export it by default. In our example, let's say we wanted the movie class to be exported by default. We add the default keyword after the export keyword. And to import the movie class, now we don't need the braces. It's a shorter syntax for the default cases, and of course, we can only have one default per module. And that's it for today. Thanks for watching.